Welcome back. Um, thank you for tuning in to another episode of what the fuck is going on in the shop. I really don't know. It's late. It's after hours. Uh, Blueprint has been gracious enough to just let me use the shop while I actually tune and uh, build here. Uh, so <clears throat> they've been gracious enough to let me use the shop after hours. As you can see, it's a mess. It's been a trying week. Um, so I wanted to go a little bit over, talk a little bit about rods. Um, it seems that a lot of us is not confused, but having a hard time making a decision if we should be um, using a aluminum rod or, you know, a uh, steel rod. So I'm going to take you guys into the engine room. Oh, this is what basically we are working on this week. Finish this up. This is a 2-3 uh, high compression stroker, billet, <clears throat> crank, manly billet, um, oversized valves, uh, R2 cams, stock intake manifold, although I don't know why that needs to be changed. Uh, the person is actually going with a very small turbo. Well, He's going with a, a 3582 uh, HTA. Uh, I would like to see him in uh, maybe like a Super 99, but you know, it's what he wants. Beautiful engine. Um, he's done a lot of cosmetic work, not only to the engine, but to his car as well. It's that one right there. Finally getting back together. So let's go in to the engine room. To kind of talk about uh, rods. So I'm going to use the Evo X as an example, is simply because what we have available right now. Um, so connecting rods, two options if not going with OEM, two options, steel uh, and aluminum. Within the steel, I guess you go with H-beams and I-beams. Um, I-beams are typically made for high horsepower, but then again, material, construction, forging, all that matters. Uh, for example, the Carrillo H-beams are um, quality-wise, much higher quality as, uh, I would say, I don't know, manly H-beams. Manly H-beams are usually made for lower horsepower. So um, that also matters. Don't just say, oh, don't just think, hey, H-beams, low quality or low or horsepower rating if the manufacturers makes a big uh, difference but today we're only talking about um steel versus aluminum when do you need to go to aluminum and why so we have two examples here so the steel and aluminum both for evo x as you can see right off the bat the, the steel just looks smaller uh, and it's because this one can't afford to be smaller. It's heavier than the aluminum, but also because of the metal, which is a lot more dense than aluminum is, it can afford to be smaller yet be stronger. You know, we can go into the metallurgy of both of these, but tip outcome is if you're running aluminum, you need to have the, the rods will 100% of the time be volume wise a lot bigger than the steel. The steel will be heavier, but smaller. So heavier automatically you should know, hey, it's gonna affect the rotating assembly. Um, it's gonna be more weight. So the, the car is gonna rob you of more of power, but then you get, um, you know, the strength. This does not change a static um well considerably static size and whatnot it'll last you a lot longer these over time will eventually stretch out so why would you go with aluminum in the first place well the weight is one you could rev higher with these and because aluminum is a softer material when you do get shocks from timing ignition advancing and all this other stuff instead of just transferring everything like a steel wood to the crank because it's you know it's connected this way um you would basically, it would take a lot of the shocks. It observes a lot of them. So your bearings last longer. Your rotating assembly stays healthier. Steel, however, transfers everything to the crank. You wouldn't 
this wouldn't bearing wise this wouldn't last as long as these but then again they both have you know advantages this will never change it will last you way longer and i would personally put them in engines any engines that are you know up to making 250 to 275 per cylinder um power i would use steel just because you know they're they, they just last long i'd rather you know have that uh, peace of mind this uh anything above 275 per cylinder i would use aluminum at 275 per cylinder on evos you're making over a thousand now the biggest thing is not even power it's about how much how often are you going to be tapping into that power so if you're you know going to daily your car if you're going to daily drive your car uh, high horsepower you're going to make you know, thousand on the dyno plus thousand to eleven hundred, and you're not really racing. Maybe in a season you'll see some, you know, street racing on the roll. Uh, you hit, you know, your your buddy or whatever you're doing. Maybe you know three to six races a, a season. Uh, some highway pulls here and there. I would definitely go with the steel. I would not go with aluminum um, because of the servicing required. Uh, person uh, shop that's going to assemble everything for you really needs to know what they're doing the maker needs to know what they're doing too many variables now if you're drag racing like that's what the car is made for you're not doing anything else with it i would definitely go with aluminum at 275 plus um just because you're just going to be you know rebuilding the motor almost every season uh, at least your rotating assembly is going to last, your bearings are going to last, and you would be able to make uh, run more timing on it. Therefore, more power or rev is a big uh, factor as well. So again, my rule of thumb is 275 plus, drag racing, aluminum, um, anything below that, steel, especially for daily driving and cruising and just street racing, I would, I would just use steel. Uh, just a peace of mind. It's... The reason why I'm actually making this video because now I'm building my motor. People's trying to convince me uh, that you know go to aluminum, aluminum because I think the culture uh, where I am, everything race car is cool. So I see people with parachutes, uh, full roll cages, and they're not racing; they're street racing, and they're basically you know, everything which race car is cool to them, which is fine. That's the culture. I'm 38. I can't do all that. You know, I, I don't want to. I actually don't like driving uh, cars that are very stiff and rowdy and all that stuff. So my plan is completely different. But either way, um, also while I'm at it, I want to point out something. I was, we're building this X right now. And it dawned, it dawned us to us that the Evo X aluminum rods especially in this area aren't as beefy uh, volume wise as the evo eights and nines and it turns out that the crank on the evo x is a lot tougher a lot beefier than the evo eights and nines are so the diameter the uh, <clears throat> where it connects to the crank the rod here is bigger since there's only a limited amount of space in between the rod and uh and the bore that it sits in um they had to design it so this is actually thinner now r and r which these rods are from are saying that that is okay their design will hold a thousand uh maybe 1100 and you know that's what the guy's going for a thousand eleven hundred but if you're pushing anything more than that you're gonna go for it um yeah this wouldn't do for you i wouldn't recommend that there are ways around it english has done was what is they increase the bore size to 90 millimeters so they get a little bit more space they cut the crank here they decrease this um diameter so it leaves a little space more space for the aluminum rods to uh have more material so that's how they increase by decreasing this inner diameter they increase the rod uh, volume, which is, you know, uh, not, not anything new. People has done that before, but thank you to English. Uh, we don't have to go through the work. You can just call them up and get the package if that's something you're interested in, and you know they'll do it for you. So that's that was very interesting.
Um, I hope I have helped some people. If I had made any mistakes, uh, please comment. Um, there's a lot more to aluminum rods and steel than what I've just said, but uh, this is my understanding and that's basically what the, the rules and regulations that I used. Um, I've also been asked, because I did my, uh, cr I'm sorry, the um, displacement video, to comment on Extreme Tuner from, from uh, Greece, I guess. So as a man of science, I basically the question was, can you comment on this? Uh, they're, they're claiming a 1.8 liter. Are they, is that fake? Are they fake? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know them. Uh, the consensus on the internet is yes, they might be exaggerating their numbers. Um, but if you look at the facts, can you do a 1.8 liter? Yes, you definitely could. You can make a custom crank lower the stroke, you would get a 1.8 liter. Why would you use that? Maybe they're running such a huge turbo that they need the RPM, maybe 11,000, 12,000, 13,000 RPMs um, to spin the motor and to get the, you know, the tranny spinning so you can get the, the, the mileage, the miles per hour. Um, are they making 2,000 horsepower? It's not impossible. It really isn't. I personally believe the technology is there now exists to hit that kind of power on four cylinders. Um, you know, that doesn't explain why they're hitting high sevens while our own boosting is hitting low uh, sevens. It could be a lot of things. It could be the drivetrain, it could be anything. So my answer to that question are, is uh, Extreme Tuna fake? I don't know. Can you do what they're claiming? Definitely, the technology exists, the knowledge exists, the shops that'll do that for you, it's gonna cost you a lot of money, but they definitely will. So I can't comment on it. More important question is, do I care? No. If someone is claiming that, I don't care. If someone is claiming 1,000 horsepower and they're really not hitting 1,000, they're using a Mustang Dyno to manipulate the numbers, who cares? do you you know like we're busy doing our stuff i'm doing this you know my stuff i got a family i got a... yeah it might bother you people are you know exaggerating the numbers to make other people look better or get some business on their end ultimately it doesn't really affect you so you know what hopefully somebody has succeeded in beating everybody and gone somewhere where no one else does because that means better for the human race right better for the evil community of the car community um just share your knowledge that's all i probably ranted more than I have to. Uh, I hope I didn't offend anyone, but uh, thank you for watching. More videos to come. I think I'm going to do one on the head because someone asked me. So stay tuned for that. Thank you.